Hi guys, Togre here with a new video and this video will be a updated BM Hunter PvP guide video for 10.2.5 of Dragonflight and I want to talk really briefly, I will try to be concise, again nothing is promised, but I wanted to give an update about BM, uh, give some tips and tricks as well. Uh, we're going to talk about stats, embellishments, uh, we're going to talk about the tier set, we're going to talk about the builds, at least one build because there is only one to be honest um, and we're going to talk about uh, comps really briefly because it's always the same for hunters anyways uh, and then we're going to talk about rotation which is to be honest not a very big piece of the pie but I wanted to uh, give a bit more uh, depth into it because I think uh, there is really a difference between someone that is really top DPS and someone that is really only has 70 percent of their capacity and then we're going to talk about the few macros you should go for if you're playing bm now let's talk about first and foremost a weak aura that is very important uh, i'll try to link it in the description although it's a very long one i will maybe say how you can find it it's called frenzy tracker trainer um, if you type it on google you will find it as a weak aura this is super important because then you can just track your frenzy stacks and that is actually the most important thing about bm hunter in my opinion like rotation wise you do actually want to be at three stacks uh, at all times because that is um, actually the thing that is making you do a lot more dps but also um, it's the most important thing to track i would say uh, we've also like your pets being rooted and such but i'm going to talk about it once we are at the builds now let's talk about the um the uh, stats that we're going for so right now we have i'm going to go upside because there is people uh, dueling uh, we're going for a good healthy mix of haste and mastery i'm going to say that uh, haste is for me very important I'll, i know a lot of people are saying but Togre, some people are going for mastery, some people are going... The thing is, um, if you're playing MM, most likely you have mastery gear on. So if some people play mainly MM and then they switch to BM, they will likely have the same gear as the MM. Now that people have uh, unlimited conquest, that could change. Uh, but still, I think it is a bait. You do not want to only increase your pet damage. Um, I think haste is way too important. It gives you way more uh, a faster recharge on barb shot, which makes it a lot easier to track the frenzy because frenzy is 10 seconds, and your barb shot is a 9.4 second recharge. So it means that you will never, normally, if you're not CC'd, lose frenzy stacks. Now things can happen, like people lining you or CCing you at the end, or uh, you think a CC is more important than having your frenzy stacks, which I can respect and that can happen. But normally, if you just do your rotation, you should never be losing your three stacks. Uh, but I'm going to talk about it once we are in the rotation. But haste does make it a lot easier to uh, have some leeway with your bob shots. You do want to spam bob shot uh, whenever it's up, but you don't want to spam it on one target. You want to spread it. Uh, depending if you are like trying to hit CC or not, it's very important for the overall DPS. Uh, again, DPS is important in solo shuffle. I think like also in twos and threes. To be honest, I think people are like saying DPS is not everything, but trust me, DPS your basic rotation is actually the most important thing if you want to climb like the first few ranks. And then CC is important. Then surviving. Then I would say using your CDs correctly. That will come with like playing more your BM. But anyways, haste makes it way more smooth. Also, your your kill command is also reduced by haste. Um, also, your damage, 20% of it, like a big chunk, is coming from barb shot. Barb shot is actually augmented by haste because of the, the amount of ticks you can have from your barb shot. Okay, so... It doesn't get augmented by mastery, so your 20% will always be 20%, um, but it will be lower, actually, if you're going for mastery. It will be a bit higher for pets, but trust me, pets can get rooted, get, pets can get CC'd. You don't want to rely only on your pets. You already rely a lot on pets because of being a BM hunter, but you don't want to rely everything on it. And I think a healthy amount of haste, I go for 30%, I think 31% even in PvP. And then we have, like, I think around... 49% mastery, maybe 50% if I remember correctly, and we have around versatility like 29-30% and a bit chunk of uh, crit. 
but uh, to Forset, let's talk about Forset. I think Forset is very important. Again, I think there is no excuse to not have a Forset uh, by now. Uh, but this is pretty much like the the goats of goats. That's that's actually making your BM Hunter a lot stronger. Um, even though you you may think it's just only a dire beast, uh, it gets also a command. Uh, it commands also kill command. So it, it, whenever you're doing kill command, it will hit from your both of your pets plus your dire beast. And uh, dire beast is something you're going to have a lot of them because of bestial wrath. Uh, and since you can actually have like around 45 seconds um, uptime, like I would say 45 seconds uh, C like CD reduction on your Beast or Wrath, uh, it makes that you are like close to a 50, 55, 60% uh, uptime on Beast or Wrath, which is a lot of damage to be honest. Plus the Dire Beast and such, it's it's huge. And we are playing with um, the uh, potent, uh, like the toxic, toxified armor patch, like both of them. And what it does is it's reducing the crit, my lowest um, my my lowest uh, rating. So it's critical critical crit, critical strike, and it's augmenting my highest rating, which is versatility. Unfortunately, I would have liked that it would be haste, but it is not the case. The the highest rating is versatility, but it gives you like a 10 to 12 percent versatility extra, which is 12 percent increased damage basically. It's it's huge. It's actually huge. I think it's one of the best, if not the best, um, embellishment you can go for as a BM. Uh, there is also plenty of them. You can also play like this blue silken one, which is like basically mastery. But you're often the target, so you're n never really above ninety percent. Um, so I really like this one. So I, I go for the toxified armor patch and then the um, the decay one, like the extra. Uh, infuse infusion on the toxified armor patch. I really like that. Uh, it gives you like a lot of stats. I'm going to show you on a dummy as well, and that's it. And then we have like the basic um, enchants. We're going for mastery haste on our gems, and we have like agility, stamina. We have accelerated agility, speed, and homebound speed. And we both we were human, so we go for double haste. Um, I should buy the, the new trinket to be honest, but I'm just lazy, uh, but I should just buy like the insignia of alacrity and you could actually go for both. I'm going to show you afterwards, uh, for the best uptime, but you could also go for the badge of ferocity and you put it on your bristle wrath, which to be honest, every bristle wrath, you will have your badge or every two, uh, bristle wrath. You could also uh, put it on another CD so you can always use your badge whenever you have it up. All right, so th those are the stats. Let's talk about builds. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, I already discussed it on my uh, normal guide, but t this is pretty much like set in stone. There's like only a few things that you can change. To be honest, this is what I changed. So I put one, uh, two points in natural mending in twos and in threes, I would say, if it's like a dampening comp, it's always like super good because you always have like two acceleration like with, with those um, talents. Or I play with Wilderness Medicine like two points if I'm playing versus a mage because they just love to Frost Nova or Ring of Frost my pets. So I put a ment pet uh, on my like, main pet, of course, and it will dispel at least 50% of the time uh, the magic effect, which like a magic effect. So hopefully it is the good one, which is the Frost Nova or the Ring of Frost. And whenever it does, it just makes you have a lot more uptime. And uptime is everything for PM Hunter. Uh, you don't have a lot of things to track, but uptime is like one of the most important things. You want to deal damage at all times. And having your pets like Frost Nova, uh, CC, whatever CC it is, you, you don't want that. So you have to put at least one point. If you're playing versus Affliction Warlock and they are smart, they put an unstable affliction on the, the pet and it's actually a very bad thing. So I just don't play with that uh, uh, versus affliction warlocks, for example. So I do remove those two points and I put like one point here and one point here. Or I could like also put one point in improved tranquilizing shot, although it's not really uh, like that useful, but whatever. Or you could also play with a scare beast if you're playing versus a feral, for example. Um, so you have a lot of uh, options, right? So those are the options I give to myself. <coughs> Excuse me. So on the uh, bottom side, unfortunately, you don't have a lot of options to change. I, I play Scarlet Shot like every single game. I just think it's too strong. It also reduces damage uh, taken by the enemy uh, for ten like 10% 10 for 8 seconds, which is also huge. But also 
um, I always tend to scatter shot the off target and try to trap my main, like my the healer every single time. If it doesn't work, and I feel like I'm like getting trained too much. I do put a diamond eyes on the off DPS and I try to scatter shot the healer. It's not ideal, but it, a CC is a CC. You don't want to waste that CC too much, but that's the I would say perfect CC you can have. Uh, at all times you want to use your cc whenever it's up you don't want to sit on your cc too much uh if it misses it misses but uh, you can also just like scare shot the healer and trap the off dps so you can actually have a lot of breathing room especially in uh soul shuffle in twos i would always like stun the healer and then trap or play with a healer that has a stun or like another cc so i can trap it off um but like there is that of course and then threes um with cupid for example a hodge on the healer and then into a trap is the easiest thing you can do um and then you can use your stun as a like main target stun pretty much um and we also play with intimidation always but um i would say in bgs you can always have fun with high explosive trap if you so desire uh, now the bottom three we don't really touch anything Unfortunately, Stampede is useless. It is not like Mist of Pandaria uh, Stampede, unfortunately. Uh, Steel Trap is uh, alright. Um, I think there is a lot of things that can break it. Uh, and again, it's too cleavy these, these days that sometimes you don't have a lot of uptime on Steel Trap. But it's always going to save you versus a Demon Hunter, for example. Uh, and we play with Double Kill Command. Uh, I really like kill Killer Instinct, but the problem is... Uh, you don't want to rely on a talent that only applies on enemies below 35%. Uh, if it was 50%, I would then maybe consider it, but right now it is not the case. So now let's talk about the uh, spec tree. Uh, in this spec tree, I actually touch nothing from A to Z. Uh, why? First and foremost, I've played around with multiple talents. And I think Dire Pack is probably the best one. Uh, because uh, every five dire beasts summon to resets the cooldown of kill command and it's actually super easy to uh, have that with call of the wild but also with also with your beast your wrath and that just gives you a lot of um, uptime on that talent i really like that also dire beasts doing more damage it's welcome because your kill command also is applied to that so I really like that talent as well. A dark command, again, every time you're going to do a kill command, you can have a new dark beast. And that can be a lot of damage, like overall. I think it just is a too good of a talent. And everything below is not that good, actually. Like, Piercing Fangs is nerfed, like, by 40%, I think, in PvP. Like, you get only, like, I, I even think 50%. You only get, like, 17% uh, increased damage, like Critical Strike. And again, Critical Strike is something that is RNG. It is not always going to augment your damage. And you need to put, like, two extra points to get that. So you have to sacrifice something from the left side which i do not like uh, brutal companion i tested it i didn't really like it too much um and the right side is uh the most interesting side in my opinion for damage uh, savagery augmenting your damage on kill command and bomb shot lasts two seconds the lasting two seconds is not the frenzy stacks by the way if i'm not mistaken uh you, we can test it right now if you want to um so we put just like random points really quickly <coughs> so this will just uh remove the uh oh it does so it's even better than that i thought my bad so it is actually uh, even better than i thought so this actually augments your uh frenzy stacks also as well so it becomes 10 seconds which is then super easy to just um maintain it so this is like the best talent in my opinion then. I didn't know it was also Frenzy Stacks, but it is also Frenzy Stacks. Uh, Master Handler is basically going to reduce the cooldown of Kill Command every time you're going to deal damage with Barb Shot. And what I do is I do triple beer Barb Shot or double Barb Shot in Soul Shuffle. Where I always have like two targets with Barb Shot. So I get like Kill Commands like very quickly, but also just in general AoE damage, which is always going to be very appreciated in those kinds of environments with dampening. Uh, Call of the Wild, very strong. Uh, it's my best CD pretty much, but this is not reduced with Wild Shot. So once you have used it, it is gone. What I tend to do is I try to do two stacks of Wild Shot 
then do a bistral wrath with another third stack of barbshaw so i get like three frenzy stacks and then i'm going to send it and once my bistral wrath is gone my second bistral wrath will be accompanied with the call of the wild and generally this is like unhealable damage people have to use their immunities or their best cds to just survive that damage of course try to not do that on a blur uh, dh if blur is still on cd to not use it but if blur has been used by god know what god knows why uh, at that point you can actually have like the best scent of your life with call of the wild with bestial wrath and you can also like apply your bloodshed and your death chakrams for like even more damage and this talent is something i didn't talk about my first uh guide but this is like the best talent for you as well this is a lot of damage like the pets have the effects of beast cleave so once they are clumped up with um like cle like melees you can cleave them like all together which is beast cleave which just augments like it, it is 80 percent of your damage basically so you're going to cleave 80 percent of your kill commands on the other targets but also the melees and such so it's very very strong and each time call of the wild summons a pet all of your pets stomp and trust me whenever five or six pets actually stomp together that's that point that people are actually crying for nerfs to bm hunter this is actually very strong <laughs> i wonder if it's what it will get nerfed one day but right now it is like a high value talent i really played a lot of with wild instincts the issue is that uh, even though you did get like crazy kill commands you have to kill command a lot and uh, in pvp again you have a lot more to do than just do damage you have to cc you have to uh, control you have to run away you have to do other bob shots you have to do your uh, your stuff at kiting and defensive play and sometimes you don't get a lot of stacks of that maybe you get like five stacks which is only 15 percent increased damage while this is like active from the get-go every time you're going to do uh, a call a call of the wild summon a pet it will do damage so it's like guaranteed damage um so those are the st the, the spec like the spec things why only one charge of bob shot well i i never have difficulties of having like no bob shot like i often have enough stacks to just maintain frenzy or to start again so i really like that as well and that's it um be sure to not use bob shot if like someone is trapped and you don't have diamond eyes you don't want to stomp near the target that you're uh, trapping because it will just break. Um, so you have to hold your bow shot or try to use it on a dummy target, like for example pet, or for example another target that is far away from the um, from the trap. So you can just maintain your CC and your damage, and you still have your frenzy stacks. Um, sometimes it is a choice. Sometimes you can break your CC, and you know that you're going to land the kill, but you have to to know it in advance what you're going to do uh, with uh, that. Uh, pvp talents those are the pvp talents i play the most in soul shuffle but i play survival tactics that's a insta lock it's too strong um if you do it correctly it is like the best wall in the game uh it's a 30 second wall like for three seconds it's very strong uh i wish it could dispel but it doesn't dispel anymore um i do play camera sting like every game as well so this is like insta lock to me and uh i play diamond eyes versus uh, holy paladins versus um uh versus dhs normally uh, but versus druids for example i do play tranquilizing darts which i think is the most op thing you can play uh tranquilizing shot uh, tranquilizing shot and counter shot releases eight darts at nearby enemies each reducing the duration of a beneficial magic effect by 40 seconds so effectively if they don't track their hots too well, they're going to get screwed. Uh, for example, a alter time on a mage, uh, he thinks it's like lasting for 10 seconds, but no, 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 it's only t lasting at least for five seconds or it gets dispelled. So you have a lot of value with that. People ca cannot really play around that because it's unpredictable pretty much. And you have like a 10 second CD, counter shot, you're going to use it regardless on a, uh, of like a, a focus target or on your main target so you will always have like a sort of a dispel kind of thing on car shock as well every 24 seconds it's a huge talent this is like the best talent you can play versus rest of druids versus uh, even versus holy paladins to be honest it's also very strong because you can reduce the time the, the time on bob which is again also high value um but there is that and then the beast within if you know that the affliction warlock or destruction warlock plays 
uh, not Mortal Coil, but they play like the Horrify, um, like or Fear, whatever. You can play that. The issue I have is it is not the best talent like at all. Like if you had like a fourth PvP talent, you could maybe play that, but I often don't play that. Uh, Kindred Beast is really really strong. The issue I have is that um, I'm going to say you lack PvP tons and most likely if you need to kite that much, if you're playing with a cunning pet for example, um, it's probably better to just play with diamond eyes and try to off like diamond eyes the off DPS and that can help you a lot. Uh, if you cannot land the trap on the healer because the healer plays very well and like 40 yards of you and you, you, you cannot really possibly land a trap there. Um, but that's most likely what I play. Wild Kingdom, I never play it. Hunting Pack, I never play it. I wish it was good. Like I've, I wish it was 75%, then I would play it. But it's a too long of a CD. Streaming at CD, by the way. I don't play Born to be Wild because the games are not lasting that much. Uh, you could actually play that in twos. Uh, I might make, make a separate video for twos. I think twos is like very specific. Uh, but most likely you're not going to have a lot of value for that. Um, what else? Uh, Dark Beast Basilisk is some DPS from the get-go, but it's like not going to be that much. Uh, Dark Beast Hawk does no damage. It is useless. Please rework it. Interlope is actually very nice if you're playing versus uh, like spell spell classes, for example, this and uh, the destroy, destroy warlock or whatever. You could actually use that and redirect those spell casts towards your pet. It's actually very strong. Uh, so misdirection is also an option that you can play, but you have to really use it. If you don't use it, it's a lost PvP talent. But then again, you don't have enough points to play everything, and that's the issue I think. Uh, just in general, like I think on multiple classes, uh, you wish that you had more PvP talents basically. So those are the talents. Let's talk about uh, class, like the comps that you can play in twos. I'm going to say don't get a headache, don't play double DPS, just play with a healer. I would suggest either with a Resto Druid or a Holy Priest or a Disc Priest because you want to fear DR because you have Polymorph DR with your a trap. Your fear, the fear DR will be invaluable for all kinds of CC you can land. Um, those are the best healers you can play. Maybe Preservation Evoker if he can actually heal you. The issue is you kite a lot. So you're going to kite his healing also a lot, which is not that great. Uh, so I would just suggest Resto Druid, which is the most S tier comp you can play, uh, Holy Priest or with a Disc Priest. Holy Priest for the more CC, Disc Priest for the more offensive uh, gameplay you can actually have as a BM Hunter. Uh, those are the kind of things I'm going for. Uh, threes, Cuphead is the best comp you can play, in my opinion. Uh, KFC is also very fun. KFC is with a Warrior and then with a Healer. You could also play jungle. The issue is with jungle is Veral Druids are very squishy and yourself are also very squishy. So the healer has to be very proficient at keeping your guys alive and you can actually do a lot of goes. The issue is uh, that your Veral Druid knows has to land Cyclones and the issue with Cyclones is uh, whenever you are the target, it becomes very hard to land those Cyclones. Um, but there is that and you could also play, let's say, a bit of a cleave matchup i guess you could play with a warlock for example uh, like an affliction warlock and you try to uh, play with diamond tra uh, traps so you don't like get uh, their dots away from the target but it's a lot of damage and it's a lot of like unhealable damage at one point of the game um, that's also an option but i would if i have an a option play with a melee for example with a retribution pile or with a warrior and you can have a lot of damage dk is also very fun, uh, fun to play ph dk is very fun in the uh like current meta the issue is dk's are very squishy these days so i don't know if it's really a proficient comp right now and playing with a dh is like a kind of a phrase roll comp where you try to land the most damage possible together to get like the best amount of kill potential in your team um, but it lacks like a few things, for example, you cannot really stand still in the darkness because often you're going to kite the DH. The DH has to like try to catch up on you because you are the target. So it's not the easiest comp to play, but whatever. Um, I do like Intervene for Warriors and I do like uh, Bobs from a Retribution Paladin or Freedom, which is always nice because with Master Skull you have like double freedom, which is invaluable for a BM Hunter. And there is that. 
So let's talk really quickly about rotation. Uh, the video is already too long in my opinion because I wanted to just do a refresher. But um, what you want to do basically is to have um, the most stacks possible. I'm going to lower the effects really quickly. So what you want to do is have, I need to reload unfortunately. Okay, so we reloaded and what you want to do in PvP, have a main target, you have a off target and you have, let's say, a focus target and this is your focus target. So you, you set a focus and what you want to do is basically have a bob shot on this target and a bob shot on this target. Why? Because then you have like double damage, you see? Those are ticking, and that's actually very nice. And you want to jump, because jumping makes you do more damage. Kappa. But what you want to do is maintain those stacks. So, once you have, like, I would say two stacks, at that point you can do a beast or wrath, and then you can do another bob shot, try to separate those bob shots, and you can just do a lot of damage. Uh, you can often do a, uh, like, camera sting on the focus target, like I did right now. And then you can do a trap on this target, uh, and then you can, for example, do a um, stun on the main target, and you can do a bloodshed, for example, to do even more damage. You can trap the uh, off DPS, you can do another trap, for example, to uh, make them slow or rooted. And overall, try to land those bob shots whenever you're done with the frenzy stacks. And that's why it's very strong to have like those kinds of add-ons, because then you don't really have to think. Just hear the sound and you know that you have to press 2, for example, which is my Brav Shot um, keybind, and then you go you're good to go. But once you have 3 stacks and you're a bit further into the game, you have your second Beast or Wrath. What you want to do right now is then do a Trap into your Beast or Wrath, into a Call of the Wild, and then you do Deeps. Just do double Kill Command, Bob Shot, Bob Shot, and then Kill Command, Kill Command, Bob Shot on the main target. And then in the death chakras, for example, a sting on the uh, on the healer. You do then a, a kill command on the second target because he has popped his CDs, for example. And you're going to do the onslaught. And then do another stun on the main target. You're going to switch back, bob shot again on the main target, beast or wrath, and you're good to go. And with Call of the Wall, the thing is you get a lot more beast or wraths, which effectively is going to be awesome to do. Um, because um, the more bishop, uh, the, the more um, bar shots you can produce, the faster you will have your uh, kill your uh, bishop wrath. So effectively, it's going to be awesome. And above my camera, you see it's a true GCD item. It's not really big, unfortunately, because I didn't have time to uh, do it bigger uh, because it's a bit like distracting in game. But uh, overall, we're doing some pretty good DPS. And then when you, whenever you're going to do a go with Beast or Wrath, you can do Bloodshot into a Death Shot Crumbs. And uh, you try to maintain those stacks and you trust you a lot of damage in general. And whenever you're going to do a, a go, for example, you can kind of sting the uh, focus target. Then you're going to trap whenever it's done. Boom, trap. You can also root them so you're easier to, uh, e it's easier to trap. You can just fake it if it's a, a, a Disc Priest, for example. You can fake it, stun him for example, ooh that's a big stun, and then you're good to go to do your biggest damage possible. So you, tr you, tr you have to try to do multiple bomb shots on multiple targets to uh, have a lot of AoE damage. And you see, it's 20% of my damage, like a lot of uh, times whenever I see other BM hunters play, and they're like quite low CR, and they do like a lot less damage like than you would think about a BM hunter, this is the main issue, bob shot. They try to bob shot the main target too often instead of like doing like a spread damage because again, it gets it doesn't get overwritten, right? If I do a bob shot on this one, it does 21k. Then I do another one, it's still 21k. It just is a bit longer duration. That's it. So this is just not going to help. It's going to just add a bit of an extra second to the 10 seconds that you have in uh, PvP, but it's it's not adding anything, right? It's only good whenever you have like the, the, it, it's it on CD, so you don't have another bob shot 
So what you want to do is try to maintain the bob shot on the main target. But if you have like a bistro ref now, for example, you have another bob shot. You want you don't want to put another bob shot to a target that has already bob shot. Then you have another bob shot coming up. Boom, 12 seconds, and you try to do a lot of damage, and then you can just do a lot of damage because of that. Um, again, I know it's difficult to have to spread your damage, but again, a lot of specs do that. For example, Arms Warrior, they do sweeping strikes, which is not often like going to help you to kill the main target, but it helps to use the mana of the healer and they don't know who they're go you're going for. And whenever you have to do make a switch, at least the bob shot is already on the target. So you will do the kill command damage and the bob shot damage and the stomp damage, for example, if you're reapplying a bob shot. I just think it's a fantastic thing to do. Um, it's it's too big to uh, to pass up. Uh, a good thing that you should know is don't um, be greedy on your CDs. But Roar of Sacrifice is very strong um, versus like specs that rely on burst. For example, a Subility Rogue. Try to use it whenever they use blades. If they don't use blades, you don't have to use your Roar of Sacrifice. Um, this is the only way they can kill you with like Shadow Blades. If they don't have Shadow Blades. Your Roar of Sacrifice is basically going to reduce, like, nearly nothing. It's going to reduce a bit, but it's not going to reduce too much. Uh, Master Skull is something you want to use depending on who you're facing. For example, if you're facing a Frost Mage, I use that to liberate my pets, not myself. There are moments where I want to liberate myself, for example, to try to uh, catch up on enemies or try to run away, but often I use it for my pets to be able to run away uh, one thing i didn't mention i play with a raptor because i want to have savage rent which is a mortal wound effect and also have cunning um, you can also play other paths you have petopia uh, I'm, I'm going to link it in the description uh, so you can always like check that out there uh, which pets you can go for but often i play with cunning because of the freedom effect and also uh, a raptor for the uh, mortal wound effect that i can have from the raptor uh, I have a second pet which is like basically a spirit beast. It has a little heal, but it heals nothing these days. So I might change it uh, really quickly. But it gives you like a wall, which is always going to be welcome um, if you want to survive damage. It's at least there. Um, so what did I want to discuss? Yeah, defensively you have like survival of the fittest, which is only six seconds, but it's a big wall. So try to use it. Uh, Exhilaration, I try to use it for myself, but often I do use it for my pet because um, I don't, I, I can't afford it to die, especially versus Cleaves. I use it very quickly, so often I will get like a double Exhilaration, at least uh, in the whole game of Soul Shuffle, I would say, the match. Um, Turtle, I try to use it at the last moment. I don't use it too often, like too fast, because if I do use it too fast, I'm kill target like for the whole match. And often I will just lose uh, the match because of that. Try to use your counter shot on uh, the healer or uh, a main range DPS, for example, destruction wall, frost mage, whatever. Um, try to have concussive shot on the main target, uh, whatever you can. Uh, I have unbinded cobra shot. I'm not using cobra shot, so people don't ask. It's 35 focus for literally no damage. It's better to use your time. Uh, and uh, GCDs for other things, for example, concussive shot or a tranquilizing do a sh a shot or a trap or whatever you can actually do. Sometimes more damage, like for example, Cobra shot, is less opportunities to win games, in my opinion. I just unbided it, I don't use it. Um, yeah, there is no need to use it. Like, really, it does no damage. There is no redeemable factor to Cobra shot. It's, it's unfortunate, but it is just how it is at, its, at the end. So there is that. Macros for the last part of the video. Um, we play with uh, not this one. This one is for survival hunters. A focus macro for counter shot. Very important. I have a disengage with a target this player. So it, it puts a trap on myself. And I have high explosive trap. So whenever I'm using the disengage, I have the, the um, trap enabled from my class tree, which is this one. Uh, it will knock them away from me. It's interesting in BGs, for example, but I don't use it in arenas because we are not using it in arenas, arenas at least, because we have, uh, at least we need a stun. Um, what else? We have a Beast of Wrath slash use 14, which is the badge. Uh, 
14 is the emplacement of the trinket, which is this one. This this is 14 pretty much. You don't have to write the whole badge, so I just use that. And now if I put like the real trinket, I switch this one out. So I just move this one and I change the uh, real trinket, like the trinket to get you out of CC, for example. But right now I'm not playing that because I'm human. I try to use the only good thing about human, which is basically having double uh, uh, trinket. Um, what else? What else? What else? Let's talk really quickly about another thing. Uh, we have uh, silence at focus. I use my criminal sting always on the healer, uh, sometimes on the DPS, but it means that I'm playing like on the back foot. But often I do use it on the uh, healer because it is just too simple to not do that. This is like the most simple thing to do, right? Just press a button and it goes directly on the uh, focus. So there is that. Again, those are my um, macros. I, ma I will make a video soon about ping macros because I think it's very good to implement it for Soul Shuffle. I should do that for my Hunter as well because I think there is a few things I can do. Um, but for example, my Priest, I use that. For my Warrior, I use that. Uh, and I really, really enjoy them. So I will share that to you guys in another video. But this video will end. It all is al already a very long video, but I talked about everything I wanted. Uh, if I miss something, please do let me know. Uh, I think rotation is not hard for BM Hunter, but you need to understand how you deal damage and how the damage is done. I know a lot of people are skipping it, but it's more probably the most important thing in Soul Shuffle. You want to have high DPS. Having low DPS is not going to win you games. You can say that CC is also something, peeling is also something, but trust me, if you have low DPS, the likelihood for you to win games is very low. Except if you're playing like a sub rogue or whatever is actually playing around like very much of a setup. That's another discussion. But BM Hunter is not a setup spec, although it has setup. You have like some raw damage. That's that's the redeemable factor of BM Hunter. This is what makes BM Hunter very strong. Having unhealable damage at all times and having CDs that are very, very like short and very strong. So try to play around that. But again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Be sure to stay safe. We will catch each other probably very soon in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.